Father of Lies, a darkly disturbing occult horror trilogy, book one, by Sarah England. Prologue. Something woke him. His eyes snapped open, heart slamming against his ribcage. Beside him, Jack's wife slept deeply, silently. His ears strained in the darkness. Who or what was there? Seconds passed. Nothing. Had been nothing. He slumped back again, the pillows. A bad dream then. Just a nightmare. That was all. Thank God. Nothing to worry about. Once more, sleep dragged him down into the heavy-limbed oblivion. He began to sink gratefully into the depths, his depths, the warmth of the bed, the lead of exhaustion in his bones. Then came a tiny tap, barely discernible, but definitely there. Perhaps simply branches scratching against the bedroom window, though. Yes, that would be it. He kept his eyes shut, not wanting this. A tiny part of his brain, on alert, should be, should he get out of bed? Just make sure. What if one of the kids was wandering around? If only his dead legs would move. So tired. God. It was unbelievably dark in there. In here. Was it usually like this? Such blackness? Like a pulp hole, ripped into the night. The entry to an internal abyss. With no air. Sweat clotted on his skin. November. It should be cold, right? Maybe he was ill. Had a temperature. High in the wall above him, the time glowed it's in digital green. It's 3 a.m. precisely. 3 a.m. on wide awake. Just like old times, being a junior doctor on call, waiting for the news of a post art world, art patient, the subconscious always on alert for the bleeper. What if they overlooked an internal bleed? What if the lungs are filling up with blood as he slept? You never switched that off. There, it came again. Quite distinctly this time, three sharp taps on the window pane, directly next to his right ear. Let me in. Twenty feet above ground, he tried to sit up to reach the lamp, but nothing happened. He tried again, this time to lift his own right arm, but his limbs remained as heavy and responsive as that of a corpse. Oh God, a stroke, paraplegic. What the hell was going on? He couldn't move. A shot went into a breath lodged like a nut in his thorax, swelling, choking. His lungs grasped for air. As once more, he attempted to force himself into a sitting position. Couldn't breathe out. Couldn't move. A nightmare, okay. This is just a nightmare. A bad one. The digital clock flicked to 3.01am. A fresh wave of icy sweat surfaced all over his body, which remained pinned firmly to the bed. Hannah! Hannah! His wife's name formed on his lips, yet no sound came. The words remained in his mind, but nothing happened to make them real. Locked in syndrome? Was that it? Something terribly wrong with his nervous system? Or a panic attack? Yes. I've been working out too hard and worrying about the girl on the ward. The one he tried to treat this afternoon? Yes, a panic attack. Okay, exactly what it was. So stay calm then. Try to just breathe. In, out, in and out. Convincing himself with a voice as smoothing as honey as soul lyrics. As the digital clock clipped to 3.02 a.m., the vortex of blackness engulfing the bedroom began to work itself into a shape, a shape which was recognisable, and yet not, as some, a, as some kind of creature, now crawling towards him, pouring at the covers, heaving its slithering form up into his chest, his breathing wet, rattling and laboured, compressing his chest with an iron force. Is what's real? It couldn't be. Foul breath in his face, the creature snickering delightfully as it whispered the words which would be etched into his brain for the rest of his life. Good morning, Jack. Wakey, wakey, it's showtime. Chapter One Drummer's Gate Secure Forensic Unit, October 2015. Drummer's Gate Hospital sits alone on the southern Derbyshire moorland. Two wings are joined at right angles. River Ward for the medium security patients and Ash Ward for those under review. Each client has their own basic facilities, consisting of a sparsely furnished bedroom and ensuite bathroom. 
There's a communal art room, a gymnasium, a large cafeteria with a flat screen TV fixed high on the wall, an office equipped with security staff and cameras alongside a small sort of reception area for visitors connects the two units. The upstairs levels of the building houses two staff meeting rooms, one for each ward. The private offices of Dr. Hardy and medical director Dr. McGowan. In addition, there is a staff lounge and some overnight accommodation facilities at the far end of the corridor above Riverwood. River Ward. River Ward. There is also contemporary, a solitary confinement bay and a suite for treatment rooms. Manicured gardens planted with box trees around the unit, which is reached by a long poplar lined driveway. Around the entire area is high electric fences, and to the rear, mole upon mole, to desolate moors topped with flattened tufts or the heather. In winter, the sound of whistling wind underneath the doors through cracks in brickwork around the rattling window panes. Overrise the pulsating radiators, radiators, cracking out heat through ancient pipes. Those indeed raise their graces to the roof whenever another strong gust bluffers the slates and grass, the eaves, are threatening to lift the roof clean off. God knows that what happened again. With each, each of the ten unit beds, the female patients, listless yet restless, dull-eyed and caged, most are here for indomitable years. While well, society tries to work out what to do with them, but that those who are debilitating personality disorders, for which there is no cure, the ones who committed crimes they barely remember, let alone admit or care about, and the seemingly impossible cases like Ruby. You've been listening to a sample of Father of Lies, a darkly disturbing occult horror trilogy, book one, by Sarah England, available on Amazon.com, Kindle $2.57, paperback $9.64, audio CD $24.00, 76.